sunshine where the Lord is easy and the rain is wine. Stay a little while and you'll know what I mean. There ain't no place like New Orleans. Come and join us down the river. Deep South and went to integrated public schools and was involved in athletics and so always uh, ended up with one foot in the southern black world and one foot in the southern white world. I think when I was a kid I, I certainly was um, pretty typical. My dad had stereotypical views of the black community and I had fears of what it would be like to be in an integrated school. When I returned um, from Chattanooga and went to, to Mercer, Mercer I, I, I took a class in black literature. And it was, of course, a heart-wrenching experience for a white guy to be in a class where he was the only white guy and where there was so much uh, undressing of my own culture and I recognized pretty early on in that class that that, uh, that I I had an obligation to um, to undo what what had been done, and and so that's that's kind of where where my passion for urban ministry all began. I, I developed um, a sense of the the discontinuity between our Christian ideals in the Deep South and, and the reality of, of, of uh, multi-generational poverty. So I wanted to be part of something that restored um, some, some real credibility to the faith that we, we, uh, we purported to, to believe in. graduated from seminary, I, my wife and I packed up our little Subaru Justy with everything we needed to survive on and traveled all over the country asking people to get behind our vision to launch a ministry in one of the worst housing project communities in the country. My strategy and plan was to enter into the Desire community via coaching at the local high school, Carver High School, which was Catacorner to the Desire Housing Project. I guess its biggest impact has been on the the youth of the neighborhood, of the community in general, particularly uh, those that went to um, Carver Junior and Senior High School. And so, make a long story short, I started coaching at Carver High School and entered into the lives of um, a generation of young people who were typical inner city kids in that they were doing all the things that you, you can imagine that inner city kids were doing. But my older brother, he was kind of like mixed up into a whole lot of stuff at the time when Coach Mo came in. You know, uh, automobile theft, taking, taking people's stuff, just doing whatever all the time. So Coach Mo came in and gave him a little new outlook, you know what I'm saying? Young people out of my neighborhood, you can get to them through sports and taking them out to eat. And these kids, you know, they love to go to McDonald's and stuff. So Coach Mo said, we're going to play basketball, we're going we're gonna to go to McDonald's, we're going to play basketball, and then we're going to have Bible study. You know, Coach Mo came in, and a lot changed, you know. I've known Mo, uh, you know, ever since he uh, started with his uh, other project in the uh, Desire Housing Project. So I guess it's been 
15, 16 years I've known him. Yeah. Oh, he's great. He's done a wonderful job with a lot of people. I mean, he's unbelievable. He's, I, I bet you he's brought hundreds of guys and girls through that, that you, I see out in everyday life now that are just doing well for themselves. And as I done got old, and I realized when, 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 when the word take, when, when Jesus says he didn't come for those who were well, he came for those who were sick. And then Mo was that person that Jesus used to come into a community and take, which is the scum of the earth, which our community. Because in our community, statistics say, you know, nine times out of ten, or whatever the statistics were, the black, us as black men wasn't going to make it to see 21 or 25. But when Christ sent them into our community, man, that, that you can throw that statistic out the door. You know, even though there are a lot of people still dying around us, but that moment, things begin to change in our community. And I know especially in my life things begin to change and just he just proved his worth over the time and 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 withstood the storms of, of us being frustrated and not wanting to hear what he had to say and he just really was persistent at getting a relationship with us i spent 16 years of my life establishing a work in in uh in what in, in a place where most people uh would not want to be Katrina was a major disruption in, in so many people's lives and, and in the community that we were serving. I stayed off in the convention center for three days after the water came in. So, testimony, sacrifices, I made a lot of being here in the city and uh, <laughs> not worry about none of the material things that was lost. There are people who are looking for um, answers, someone to help them make sense of what has transpired. Um, there are basically no facilities for youth. There aren't very many kids in the neighborhood anymore, but they're coming back. I mean, of course, it was a, a community that was already ravaged by multi-generational poverty and, and injustice, and the, you know, the structures there were, were very inferior, and so you know, the 10 or so feet of water that, that covered the community just ruined it. 